So here's the do now. We're going to find the coordinates of that point highlighted in yellow, along with the slope between any two points along this line. Uh, hit pause so you got your answers, and then you can resume play and check what you got. All right, so this point is x coordinate of 2. We go to the right two spaces, and y coordinate of 7. So we got to go up 7. The slope, I chose to use these two points down here where MathCat started and where MathCat ended. And I just counted squares to get the rise. I went up four spaces. And the run, always to the right, was two spaces. So I wrote that as a fraction 4 over 2. Always reduce our fractions. 4 actually does divide evenly by 2, so we got a slope of 2. Today we're going to look at point slope form, which is a new way of writing the equation of a line. Uh, along with that, we have two learning targets. One, that we'll be able to write the equation in point slope form, even either from uh, a graph or just information that we're given, like in, a, in words. And the second learning target is we'll be able to create the graph from the equation. So in either case, we're going to need to identify some key information uh, and either put it into or pull it out of this equation. So to recap, we've seen equations of lines before. What we've been using up until now, y equals mx plus b, has a name. It's called slope-intercept form. Uh, math names are, for the most part, very descriptive. And uh, what the name says is what's in the equation. So uh, when we look at y equals mx plus b, that m is the slope and the b is the intercept. And so it's called slope-intercept form. Okay, that same kind of naming convention also applies to this new form we're going to look at today called point slope form. And so you might imagine in this equation, we're going to find the coordinates of a point and also we'll find the slope. And so I've got highlighted in green, there are the two coordinates of a point, the x coordinate as x1 and uh, in y1 is another green highlighted point. Uh, slope is in pink, it's going to go right outside those parentheses. And I uh, highlighted in yellow these minus signs. So we have to pay attention to these minus signs because it means that the like the generic base equation before we put any numbers in there already has these minus signs, and that's going to affect the way things look. Um, we remember minus signs. We can also call it a negative. You know, depending on the circumstances, that may or may not make more sense. But we can think of it as a negative sign, which is just like the reverse card in Uno. So these yellow minus signs in point slope form are going to give our coordinates the opposite appearance of what the actual coordinate values are. I'll show you here with this example. So we're going to write the equation of a line that has a slope of 2 and passes through the point 2, 7. Those are the pieces of information we pulled from the do now. So the slope is going to go into the slope box right here. The x coordinate, that's the two, the x coordinate is going to go into the x coordinate box. And the seven, which is the y coordinate, is going to go over here into the y coordinate box. Now, if I were to write this equation without any of those boxes and get y minus seven equals two parentheses, x minus two, close parentheses. So the thing that we notice about this final version of our equation is that in the equation, the part of the equation where we find the x coordinate is inside the parentheses where the letter x is. And it says x minus two in those parentheses. But we remember the original coordinate up here is a positive 2. And so it now in the equation has the opposite appearance. It looks like it's a negative. It's not. The negative sign is part of the equation. It's not actually part of the coordinate, which is confusing. That's just the way this equation works. There's a reason for it, which we'll see in a little bit. But the same thing has happened with our y coordinate in the equation. We see on the left side of the equal sign, y minus 7, the letter y tells us we're looking at the y coordinate. And so that minus 7 has the opposite appearance. It says minus 7 in the equation, but really that came from a positive 7 as the coordinate. Okay, let's look at another example. I think this will be a little bit more enlightening. So uh, I'm going to write the equation of a line with a slope of 2. And that slope is going to drop right into the slope box. And uh, coordinates 4, negative 3. This 4 
course, that's the x coordinate that's going to come over here to the x box, and put four in here. And the negative three, that's my y coordinates, are going to drop a negative three right there. When I clean this equation up and write it without the boxes, one of the other things I'm going to do at the same time is clean up this double negative that I just highlighted in yellow. So we don't want to leave a double negative. I mean, you could technically, it means the same thing, but I don't want to write my final answer with a double negative because it looks weird and confusing. So with subtracting a negative number, it's the same thing as adding. So the first part of the equation, we'd rewrite as y plus three, and then equals two, parentheses, x minus four, close our parentheses, and we'll go ahead and circle that. So we sir Miley faces this time. So let's go back and compare our final answer with the original coordinates. So the original x coordinate was positive four, and in our equation inside the parentheses where the x coordinate goes, we see it's the opposite appearance. It says x minus four. On the other hand, the y at the beginning of the equation says y plus three, and our original coordinate was a negative three. And so it still has the opposite appearance, whether it was a positive number to begin with in the equation, it appears negative. If it was originally a negative coordinate or is a negative coordinate, it will appear positive in the equation. And so that's going to be really important when we are given an equation and we have to pull information out of it. We have to remember that. So I want to look at one more thing, writing equations. Uh, here's a graph which has a couple of points labeled. So we're going to write an equation for this line in point slope form. The first thing I want to do is identify a point. So I'm just going to pick this one. You could choose either one, but you guys were uh, not fast enough, and uh, one of your classmates already said negative one, three, and so I'm going to go with that. And then we'll also need to find the slope. So between these two dots on the graph, I'm going to find the rise and the run. Uh, I don't have MathCat to help me this time, but I can count squares on my own. So the rise, it's going down two spaces, and the run is going to the right two. So my slope has rise over run, negative two over two. I can reduce that fraction. I can clean it up. I can just do the division, negative 2 divided by 2. It's going to be a slope of negative 1. Okay, I'm going to put that slope into the slope box of my equation. And then I'm going to put the x coordinate from this point that we chose, the negative 1, into my x box, and the y coordinate of 3 into the y box. Final answer. We can clean it up, but this is the final answer. What if the other part of the class that was saying we should use 1, 1. What if you guys had uh, had your way? Then what would happen? So my y coordinate, I'll write this, I'll just go from left to right through the equation. The y coordinate is 1. So I'm going to put a 1 here. Slope is still negative 1. And my x coordinate also is positive 1. And so now this has an interesting phenomenon where part of the class has one answer and part of the class has a different answer. And that's not supposed to happen, right? Some people got y minus 3 equals negative 1, parentheses, x minus negative 1. We could clean up the double negative if we wanted. And some people in the class are going to get this other answer that I've highlighted in blue of y minus 1 equals negative 1, parentheses, x minus 1. And let's see if we can make things more confusing for a minute before we clean this up. What if I look at this graph and I say, you know what? There are two points that are drawn on this graph, but I can actually see more points. What if I had used this point right here, which was not a labeled point, but I can see that the line clearly goes through that intersection on the graph paper. And so that would be point negative two, one, two, three, four. And so the x coordinate of negative two goes in the x box over here. Slope does not change, that's still negative one. And my y coordinate was four, so I'm gonna put a four right here. So now it appears that there are three totally different equations that we've got for this line. 
what if we found one more point? I mean, just to make things even more weird. I've got, uh, let's see, what colors did I not use yet? I guess the red will work. There's a point down here. I'll use this red dot. So that would be 3, negative 1. So if I drop the 3 and the negative 1, 3 is the x, negative 1 is the y, slope is still negative 1. Okay, so now you kind of catch the idea. It appears that there are an unlimited number of different equations that are possible, depending on which point we have used for the coordinates. Okay, so this is both a strength and a weakness of point-slope form. The, on the, the plus side, the strength, we're not limited to using just this one special point to get our equation. That was true when we did y equals mx plus b. You had to have the y-intercept. It's the only option. You need the y-intercept, not any other point on the line. And if you don't know the y-intercept, you're going to have to do more work so you can find the y-intercept and get your equation. So with point-slope form, that doesn't matter. You can use any point you have the coordinates for. If you've got multiple points, you can choose any of them. So there are more options, and that's usually a good thing. The drawback or the weakness is that since there's not standardization, we don't have to use this one point every time, it makes it look really confusing because we just came up with four different equations for the same line. And that doesn't seem like that's a good thing because now you're like, oh, I don't know which one is right. Is this a green one or the blue one or one of these other two that I didn't highlight with the color? The actual answer is they are all the same equation. I know they don't look that way, but if I were to take any one of these equations and solve for y to put it into slope-intercept form, I'm going to get the exact same equation every single time. So even though point-slope form has a lot of different varieties and they look different, they're not they will all prove to be mathematically equivalent. So maybe we'll just take two of them. Let's take these first two and see what happens if we solve them for y. So y minus 3 equals negative 1, x plus 1, and the blue one, y minus 1 equals negative 1, parentheses, x minus 1. Let's find some workspace down here. Okay, so let's do the green one. So I'm gonna distribute this negative one first. So negative one times x is negative x, and negative one times one is negative one. And then to get the y by itself, I'll have to add three. Do the same thing on the other side of the equal sign. So y, oh, where'd that equal sign go? I lost it. Y equals negative x, and negative one plus three is two. All right, let's do the same process with this blue one. If I distribute that negative 1, I'm going to get negative x plus 1. Add the 1 to get y by itself. And that is the exact same equation both ways. I could have taken any of the other equations. I'm not going to do all of them, but I could take any of them. and I'll always get the exact same results when I change it into slope-intercept form. Okay, last uh, example here, I want to take a look at how we can create a graph from an equation. So we're going to graph the equation y plus 2 equals 2 thirds, parentheses x minus 3. So we're going to have to identify these two pieces of information. We need a point, so that'll be coordinates, and we need the slope. So in order, the point inside the parentheses where that letter x is, is we're going to find the x coordinate. And the equation will always have the opposite appearance of the actual coordinate. So it says x minus 3, and we know that really the coordinate will be a positive 3. So it's the x coordinate. The y coordinate is over here by the letter y on the left side. The equation says y plus 2, which is the opposite appearance of the actual coordinate. I'm going to switch that to a negative 2 for my coordinate. Slope is this number right in front of the parentheses, so that will be 2 thirds. So on my graph, I need to put the point first. That is my starting location. So I'm going to go right three and down two. Here's my starting point. 
And then from this blue dot, I will use the slope counting squares to find my next point. So I'm going to go up two spaces and right one, two, three spaces to right here. And then I can draw my line, my line drawing tool. Boom, just like that. 